Welcome back to DPS Gaming, guys. This is Sabotage. I just wanted to give you an update on our overpowered Immortal Necro that you guys have all really enjoyed a lot. Um, and give you a rundown on exactly where we are, what we're doing, um, and uh, show you what the entire build has come to with all the updates that we've done to it over the time, that it's ready for our little gauntlet run in the coming days. Uh, so, to start off before anything else, like always, we're going to go into a T100. And I'm going to show you a few little things that we've done. And I'm going to show you a few little things that have changed. We'll do a full update to the Paragon board, which a lot of people have been asking about because we have done some updates and they weren't showing properly on the last links of the build. These new links down will be completely up to date and everything will be exactly as you see it here. So, throw on your bone storm and start running. Now, I know that you were probably looking at a Melted Heart a little bit earlier. I don't know if I started recording right on it or not. But, as you can see, Nightmare 100s are absolutely nothing. You can just run through these. You can power through them like they're absolutely nothing. Fantastic fun. Really great fun build. Really great fun to play. And it's nice just almost having immortality when you're running through these things because uh, dying sucks. Let's all be honest here. Dying sucks. So the first thing I wanted to show you was that you can play this build in this style. Um, I'm going to show you exactly what's been going on here because um, you are going to notice a couple of things that we've got. Uh, I've used a, a Banish Lord's Talisman. Uh, and the reason I've put the Banished Lord's Talisman on, or the reason I've got it sitting uh, in the account at the moment, is because I want to show you that you do not need any Uber Uniques. None. Zero. This build will work just as is. You, um, you're popping hits where there's the occasional, you know, 1.8, 1.9 million. Most of them are a couple of hundred thousand. You'll notice uh, there was a 600, there was an 800. Like, it just slaps. And if you're taking on these dungeons, yes, it'll do Uber Lilith. Yes, it'll do Uber Jurial. Yes, it will even carry three of your mates so that all four of you can do um, the Ubers. It's just nuts. As long as your Bone Storm is on, you don't really have much to worry about. If your Bone Storm is not on, do exactly what I'm doing here. Just move back a little bit. Start to put the Crepify out. Start to just bang things. Just have that little bit of distance between yourselves uh, because without Bone Storm, it is very, very easy to die. With Bone Storm, it is much, much harder to die. Uh, Bone Storm is extremely, extremely overpowered for the Necro. So, while we're going through and doing this, you can see that the Nightmare 100 is just no issue whatsoever. Gauntlet-wise, if I ran through a 70, you are literally just running. There is, you, you just don't stop. You just, you shoot, you run, you shoot, you run. For the Gauntlet, this is gonna be extremely overpowered. And if we go back in here now, and you'll see I'm going to swap the Banished Lords for the Melted Heart now. All this is doing is giving me a little bit more survivability, uh, because you can see that our essence is insane. Our essence just stays green. It was doing that with Banished Lords. It does that with Melted Heart. If you get the Melted Heart, I use it because it just gives Ossified Essence that little bit of extra kick. Um, you'll see it was a 1.7 million hit that just came out of it. Um, the, the, the build slaps. There's nothing more that I can say. It is absolutely insane. So, to save the time for the video, because we can go through and just do all of this, you can see that it's just gonna work. Um, you know, I don't wanna have to run through the entire thing and just stretch a video out for absolutely no reason. So what we're gonna do now is just jump back out into a town so that we can go through the build and you guys can see everything that's going on with it. Um, you can run a normal amulet as well, which will be literally just as strong. There is going to be absolutely no issue with running just a normal amulet. Uh, I was going to throw this one on, but what I've got on it is movement speed. Movement speed after killing an elite, a little bit of damage reduction because we don't have Melted Heart to help out with that. I've got two to the Gloom passive. If you are using a normal amulet with that Gloom passive, all you would do is swap Plague over for Blighted, and that's going to give you a shadow damage, which is going to help proc things for Gloom and stuff like that. But otherwise, Banish Lord's Talisman, no problems. You get the extra ranks to everything. Our armor you'll see is at 11, but as soon as we go back into the dungeon, the armor is 
well, well, well over armor cap. Your armor capped, your resistance capped, your, your everything capped. It's just nuts. Armor at 20,000, life at 15,000, attack power at 19,000. And then if you have a 925 amulet, whether it's the Banished Lords or whether it's anything else, you will also be right on the cusp of your resistance caps. If you really, really, really want to push that resistance cap and you want to get that last little bit of resistance, uh, on the Paragon board, there are some nodes that sort of sit around in one of these. I can't remember exactly which one it is, um, but there are some resistance nodes that sit down in one of these. All you need to do is just take some out, throw some into the resistances. There it is. Uh, nope, that's armor. One of them is a resistance. Um, we'll go through, you'll probably see it as we're running through and talking about all the other stuff as we're going through the Paragon board, and that will actually just give you the full 70%, but either way, um, you are basically resistance cap. With Melted Heart, I've got just that little 0.8 bit extra, that little tiny bit extra on the resistance cap. It just puts me from 69.2 to 70. You're 0.8 off. It's just nuts. Okay, so let's start with uh, gear and what gear we're using and why. So, Deathless Visage. I really don't need to explain this. Critical strike with bone skills, physical damage, maximum essence, which is going to work for your ossified essence passive, and you got a little bit of damage reduction. The echoes as they travel help proc lucky hits and help proc a lot of other things, and they'll help proc your littlest wall. Play the Deathless Visage is the best thing that you can do. Next down for your armor. I've actually built in physical damage, bone skill damage into my armor. And I've got damage reduction from shadow damage over time enemies. I'd really love to be able to swap that out. I'm just not finding any armor that I can swap that out for. But again, if you want to be able to have that damage reduction get shadow damage over time, quick swap to Blighted, you will be able to get that. It's going to give you the same sort of effect. You'll just get that little bit of damage reduction. But yeah, try and find damage reductions on this. The reason I've gone for physical damage and bone skill damage is we are that high on armor cap. We don't need more armor. We don't need more DR. The... The Bone Storm gives us all the DR that we need, and we've got more than enough armor. Trust me, you're fine. You can actually get a little bit of attack on your chest, which will allow you to hit harder. On your gloves, no matter what you do, these are the exact stats you want. Attack speed, critical strike chance, lucky hit chance, and ranks to Bone Spear. This is where I've thrown the Ossified Essence on. The Ossified Essence is a key passive extra, which your Bone Skills hit up to 40x harder. Uh, here I've got your Bone Storm, Shielding Storm. Um, that was the other one, sorry, that I missed out a bit earlier. But that's what you want on your gloves. The gloves, uh, they're 827s, guys. I haven't even found 925s for this. That's how nuts this is. We're going up a little bit higher on gloves. You might be able to find something where your critical strike goes all the way to 12. It works perfectly. We don't even need to bolt wheel. So my pants are full damage reduction and armor. I could actually probably swap that 18% armor out. I don't need it. We could get more damage reduction but I don't need that either. <laughs> These pants by themselves cap you out on everything. So I've got armor, damage reduction from close, damage reduction from distant, damage reduction while fortified, and I've got the juggernauts aspect on there. You'll notice my boots have got three maximum evade charges, so I've got four evades all together. That basically just cancels out the juggernaut. Look for the evade charges, that way you can play juggernaut, you're not even gonna feel the difference. It's gonna feel like normal. And when metamorphosis comes back, you'll be able to just spam metamorphosis four times and move like no tomorrow. On your boots, what you want, all stats, movement speed, essence cost reduction. I've put corpse tendrils on here just to be able to get some more to the cooldown. And I've also put critical strikes, grant movement speed. Because once we have our bone storm up, we are basically at almost 100% critical strike. We just crit constantly. It's just basically a full 12% movement buff for me. It can be a 16% at max, which is fantastic. Black River. Don't play anything else. Go to Jurial, knock him out, get a Black River, and try and just get it as high or as good as you can. Your corpse explosions will consume four extra corpses. This is gonna proc so many things, and as we go through the Paragon board, I'll show you exactly what it is, but it'll proc stuff like fueled, uh, fueled by death. It'll proc stuff like huge flesh, which is gonna make sure that essence ball of yours stays that exact green color that you're seeing on the screen right now. What it also does is it does life on kill. And if you don't know this, Basically, we had Undying as a Vampiric power. This kind of just replaces it. It's like having Undying anyway. Every time you kill something, you're just healing yourself up if you're losing any life. It is phenomenal. Lidless Wall. This is the part that makes you basically immortal. 
Littlest Wall gives you things like Thorns, Block Chance. It does take some of your main weapon damage, so it does actually bring you up so you've got stuff, but it blocks things. It's, it's great to have a shield. What it also does is while you have an active Bone Storm anywhere on the screen, it doesn't matter if it's in Zimbabwe. As long as a Bone Storm is active, you have a chance to proc another Bone Storm, which means you can run an entire dungeon proccing Bone Storm once. If you can get a good max life roll and a good essence roll on this, that's all you need. The rest of it is just a nice thing, but that's what you really want is your good max life and your good essence. Essence, again, for the ossified essence passive, you want your essence as high as possible. And in all honesty, guys, that's literally the only reason I'm playing Melted Heart. I wouldn't even be playing Melted Heart on this build because it doesn't need it. I only play it because you get 60 maximum essence, which is basically 30x damage with the ossified essence key passive. Um, on your ring... Now, I've found that the uh, Torment works amazingly. Um, basically, what you're going to get is critical strikes, which you're doing constantly, increase your essence regeneration by 170%. So, however you're regening, you're regening that much faster. I've got resource gen, maximum essence, the lucky hit to proc our bone storms, and critical strike chance. That's what you want on here. That's the stuff you need. Sacrilegious soul, because, well, every single necromancer plays sacrilegious soul. Just get Sacrilegious Soul. Get it, play it, done. Amulet, now, anything you want, my recommendation is if you don't have Melted Heart, you saw me playing with Banish Lords. The Overpower, eh, not that good, but Critical Strike, yes. Resource Gen, yes. Two ranks to all your core skills, yes. And then because you're just spamming out constantly with your Bone Spears, and your Bone Spears basically cost 25, uh, it means that every single time, look, four times is 100, three times that is 12. Every 12th one guaranteed overpower is just going to smack and it's just going to smack with an overpower crit. And then you're going to see those orange numbers pop up and you're going to see things in the millions. Um, it's just worth it. Play Banished Lords. If you don't have Banished Lords, play any amulet with movement speed on there because you just want to be quicker. Movement speed, damage cost, uh, damage reduction, is any sort of damage reduction is great, really. Um, and then what you want to be playing on here is your Corpse Tendril Grasping Veins. So Grasping Veins is the one that you want to play on there. Um, I know I don't have it on there because I, I just don't have a need for it. I don't even know if I've got a Grasping Veins which would um, which would make it. Oh, there you go. Grasping Veins right there, 2040. Um, so the Grasping Veins is what you want to play on there. So Grasping Veins on your amulet if you've got a standard amulet. Otherwise, play Banished Lords. And if you're lucky enough to actually have an Uber drop, mind you, the only Uber I've had drop is Melted Heart. 500 runs of Dural, guys, Melted Heart. Not the best, really doesn't make you feel good. Um, but here, just to prove it and just to prove that I'm not sort of just pulling your legs and trying to tag you along, is I'm gonna go in here, this is exactly what you would play. Throw on the Grasping Veins because then you've got 30% uh, increased critical strike chance when you cast Corpse Tendrils and Sacrilegious does that for you automatically and you deal 60x bonus critical strike damage with anyone that's been damaged by the Corpse Tendrils and they're going off constantly. You can also proc them on top of that, which is really, really great. So, once we've done all of this, uh, what you want to play is you want to play an Emerald to get critical strike damage against vulnerable enemies. You want to play uh, Life, so you want to play one of these Rubies. Yeah, Rubies for maximum life in all your gear and you will be able to play skulls in all of your gear. I really don't know why I've got lightning damage here because my lightning damage is gonna be, yeah, nuts, stupid. I don't need the 30% as it's at 150 already. So um, you can play skulls across all your gear, just play skulls in there. Uh, moving along here, this is going to be really quick because everyone just knows the reasons why. So skeletal warriors do the defenders, skeletal mages do the cold, skeletal, golem, uh, skeletal golems do the iron. That's it. Just run them exactly as is. That's exactly why we're doing it. This is going to give you resistances. This is going to give you increased vulnerable damage. This is going to give you increased critical strike damage. Simple as that. Um, skill tree. Let's go through this really quickly so that we're not extending this video for longer than it needs to be. Um, and you will have a link to this down in the description, which will be on Mobilitics. You'll be able to grab all this information afterwards as well. Bone Splinters 1 and 2. Why? Because we've got to move down to the next thing. We don't even use Bone Splinters. We are going 3 in Unliving, uh, unliving Energy for the maximum essence. We are going 3 into Imperfectly Balanced for the 15% increased damage. Max out your Bone Spear. Run it all the way up to Supernatural. I know a lot of people are playing Paranormal. You don't need that extra 5%. Supernatural will give you the first enemy is vulnerable when you hit them. That really helps a lot. If you do need the critical strike chance, you can play this. It's not gonna make a huge difference. It's not gonna make a massive change in the way things work. But when the first enemy you hit is vulnerable, that helps a lot. Um, 
Next down, we've got a huge flesh. Huge flesh gets the extra ranks from Black River. And what this just means is you get a heap of corpses. And when you get a heap of corpses, Black River explodes all the extra corpses. It's really, really good. One point into Blood Mist. I'm only using this because I've got no other form of Unstoppable. Once we get uh, Metamorphosis back and we throw Metamorphosis on our boots, I will be moving this down to Bone Prison just so that I've got a better way to control enemies. But for now, while we don't have Metamorphosis, this is basically the only way we can just break CCs. So one point into Blood Mist. I go Corpse Explosion all the way out into Plague because Plague does extra damage to slowed, stunned, and vulnerable enemies. We slow with Decrepify and with Corpse Tendrils. We stun with Corpse Tendrils. We're vulnerable with Corpse Tendrils and with Bone Spear. Just makes sense. Across here, we got a Grim Harvest, so that consuming a corpse generates six essence. Now, you saw over here that my uh, Bone Spear only costs, well, 23 now with the, um, with the essence cost reduction, so 23. This is blowing up four extra corpses on top of the one it already does with Black River. So you're blowing up five corpses, six essence each, 30. So you're getting 30 essence a second. And if you're shooting out one a second on these, you're getting 23, 30 back. You're always seven in the positive. Fueled by death, you're getting 15 times increased damage for six seconds after consuming a corpse. You consume a corpse every single second. So you are always getting this 15 damage multiplier. I'm playing Death's Reach for now. This is apparently being changed in the mid-season update to movement speed, so it's just gonna stay there. And then this will change to 12x movement speed, so we'll have some more movement speed. Amplified damage because you throw out your Decrepify heaps of times and you're just gonna do 12x multiplicative damage. Decrepify all the way through to Abhorrent because that just helps with cooldowns. Not that you really need it because if you shoot out Bone Prison once, it should basically last you till the end of the entire thing. Um, now, if you were playing the other amulet, it will give you some points into Gloom. Don't put points here, but if you're playing the other amulet, and uh, the one that I showed you earlier, if you're going to play that and you're going to play it with the Gloom passive, this is the reason why I do it. Because if you're playing with the Gloom passive, when you are when you're damage enemies with darkness skills that take more damage um, from you and your minions for X amount of seconds, it just helps when the corpse explosions blow up to be bigger, bl bigger blows. Uh, corpse tendrils all the way through to the usual plagued so that you get your vulnerable and you're slow. One point into serration, you don't need any more because the whole point three and all this sort of stuff is just stupid. But you do want three in compound fracture for the increased damage. You do want three in evulsion for the increased damage. I've seen people put things in here to reduce the cooldowns, but I don't. you don't need it. If you're playing a bone spirit build, this kind of helps out here and there. If you're playing the uh, bone prison build, that might help out here and there. I don't use it at all, ever. I just don't see a point in it. But you know, if you're taking points out of somewhere else or you've got three points that you've moved from somewhere, you want them somewhere, throw them in there. It just works. Uh, we obviously get standalone. We obviously get Memento Mori because we've sacrificed everything. I had one point left over, so I threw it in here for a little bit of an attack speed bonus. You could actually put that anywhere else that you want, over here or wherever you want. I like to have that little tiny bit of extra attack speed. And we're always healthy. We've always got the attack speed. And then basically the thing that makes us immortal, Bone Storm. Uh, take it through all the way. <clears throat> you get more critical strike chance, you get more DR, and it's active all the time. And then we run Ossified Essence, which is half a percent multiplicative increased damage for each point of essence. I'm at 103. The reason I'm at 103 is because I get the extra from this. If I took this off um, and actually just didn't wear it, you could go down to the bottom here again and you'll see it's at 73. So you should be sitting somewhere around that 73 mark. Um, there's some stuff that we do in the Paragon board that helps lift us up into that as well, which is exactly where we're going next. So starting from the beginning, we come up, we go to the left, we go to the right, we take everything here for the resistances and all of that. We throw in Sacrificial. So sacrificial will give us bonus to Magic Nodes. Magic Nodes gives us Dexterity, and it also gives us some armor, and it also gives us some damage, and it also gives us a little bit of extra willpower. So that's why we put Sacrificial in there. It also gives you 10x multiplicative damage when you have no active minions. And we have Zip Nada. Then we go up into the bone graph board. Everyone knows why the bone graph board is just always thrown in as a second thing. Um, try and get over across here to bone graft as quick as possible. The extra little point you've got here just gives you some critical strike chance with your bone skills. Um, come across here for the maximum essence and all the way up. As you're leveling, grab the essence on kills because they help a lot. Once you finish leveling, those points will go towards the end of the board. Um, this gives you critical strike damage with bone skills. This gives you some maximum life. Um, and that's board two that we go into. We then come up into board three, which is your sense of death board because, well, it's your sense of death board. You really don't want to go into anything else. Um, in here, we are going to be throwing control. My apologies if I didn't tell you what to throw down here. It's exploit. 
and we're just crawling through really quickly so it can come up. Incent of death, we are going to put control, so then you do extra damage and you do extra damage to crowd control enemies. From there, we are going into board number four. We're actually coming up this way first. Um, and what we're going to do is go into Flesh Heater, so that when you consume five corpses, you get 40x increased damage for six seconds. Your Black River consumes those corpses constantly, every single second. 40x multiplicative all the time. Um, there was those bonus resistance nodes if you needed to throw an extra point in somewhere here. Uh, in here we put Corporal, which is also going to give us bonus resistances. It's also going to give us bonus damage to Elite, which helps when there's big enemies out on the board. And you and your minions deal more physical damage. Uh, we're basically doing physical damage with bone spear. So we then come up here and we jump into uh, board number five, I believe this was. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it is. Board number five, we've got Bloodbath. The only reason is so we can get to this section really, really quick. We put Essence in here so that we get critical strike damage. And critical strikes deal more damage to enemies that are not healthy. So as soon as you hit them the first few times they're not healthy, you do 22x more damage to them while they're not healthy. Really, really great. We try and max this out as much as we can. You can see I've gotten as many of the dex nodes as I can on here. And it gets us to 194 critical strike damage. Then the final board... Um, I don't know why a lot of people don't play this. I do because it's just insane and it just gives you a heap of damage while healthy and you are always healthy because you're playing at distance and you can see that even in Nightmare 100s, people aren't even really getting up to you. So don't worry about the potion healing. That's just neither here nor there. But Imbiber is an incredible, incredible uh, thing to play. 77% extra damage while healthy um, and that's basically what caps us with this massive attack power of 24,000 which is huge huge to start with base damage but that's basically a board that's everything that we play here that's everything that we've leveled up once all of these are at 21 you get some huge damage and that's your paragon board uh, and this is the this is the build guys <clears throat> there's really not much more i can say uh now for those of you who want to see just the rest of the dungeon or a little bit more of the dungeon or a little bit more gameplay i'm just going to jump back in here we're going to throw in our bone storm you can see here decrepify bring them all in together bang all dead um, again, Decrepify, Corpse Tendrils, bang, all dead. Decrepify, Slime Down, bang, all dead. It's, there's not really many things that will be able to hit you. There really isn't. You just, just walk around, smash things. Corpse Tendrils will bring them all in. Corpse Explosions explode on them. And you can see that every time Corpse Explosions explodes on it, that we basically just get all of our stuff back. It's just... Essence is back. Everything's back. Look, the Essence ball just stays green, guys. Look at it. It's just nuts. You will have zero problems with Essence. You'll have zero problems clearing Nightmare 100. You'll have zero problems with Ubers. Um, I've carried people constantly from uh, a couple of the Diablo groups on Facebook, and I carry four at a time uh, because you just can. This build will do absolutely everything. There's really only one build that would sort of um, do bosses better than this, and that's obviously the uh, the barb because you know there's just some nutty one-shot mechanics that you can get out of a barb it's just they're, they're insane um but <clears throat> when it comes to just everyday play um because of all the movement speed because of all the extra stuff that we've got this build will do all of it and then when you come into a nightmare 100 dungeon or a vault 100 or whatever it may be look stand in a corner just come down here start shooting bone spears up the crapify things as they're coming out. Look, you don't even really need to aim. It just automatically just pulls some things for you. You can see all of them being pulled together. Watch the health bars and you'll just see that everything sort of comes together. Try not to stand in poison because you're not absolutely immortal, but you are pretty damn close. Um, poison and stuff like that will eventually get to you. You can't just sort of stand in there and think that nothing's going to kill you because we're not like the immortal barb that Rob built. Um, but when it comes to copping hits, you can cop the hits. You can see here I'm just copying hits from everything. Nothing beats us. There we go. Room done. Run around, grab your stuff, and then you can just go to the end of it. I obviously don't get the Zoltan's Warden because I jumped out of the dungeon to show you guys. Uh, and then build up the rest of your glyphs and take them all to 21. That's the build. Uh, I'll have this updated on my belief. You'll find the link below. If you're enjoying these guys, if you like our builds and if you like what we do, please do like and subscribe and do all the usual sort of stuff because we love having you on board. I really enjoy recording these things um, and I'm hoping that when the mid-season update comes out, we'll be able to have a couple of other builds for you because we'll go through all of our current builds for the gauntlet. We'll respec and we'll redo everything and that will be with our barb, with our pulverized druid, with this necro and with Firella, our little... Uh, 
ball, a little ball of fire sorcerer. Uh, and then we will go through and just do a couple more videos to update you on the gauntlets and we'll see where we go. Would love to make a top 100. If we do, it'll be insane. If we don't, I suppose it's not that bad, but this, that's the goal. We want to try and make top 100 in the gauntlet. Really hope we get there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a great evening.